Right, you can contact us by failing to qualify as a host nation, thus ensuring that uh, that your change that sharing that your women's teams have now done better in the men at football cricket and indeed rugby or alternatively you can con- use more conventional methods you can contact us on facebook and we're at facebook.com forward slash the moo camp you can tweet us using the hashtag the moo camp during the show you can email us at radio at moo camp.com or you can text 80085 but remember to start your message with I don't know what the hell that says. I can't. Australia. 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 Ah, Australia. Right, I it's a rugby thing. Ah, right. It's kind of a theme fan building of it. here. Or oh, indeed you it's can text. Building well, obviously. I'll be direct to the studio on 07848 I need sex. I'm not getting any. Australia. I get it now. Australia. Australia. Excellent one. Look, Doris Idenham from Coffee Hall has said, uh, a point has to be worth a couple of points, boys, if you know what I mean. If only this was a television show, I've got, got a couple of points to share with all your listeners. Quite. Um, Simon from London's texted in to say, Saturday was exciting, wasn't it? Difficult first half, but I was there singing loud and proud throughout, and I knew we'd come through in the end. Proud to be a Happy loyal anniversary, supporter. mate. Happy anniversary, Simon. Happy anniversary, si. Steve from Middleton has texted in to say, bring on the Blackburn. <laughs> Uh, Wanda from Willem Village has texted in to say, can't understand why Robbo doesn't start Daniel. He's capable of creating something from nothing, and that's something that we're really missing right now. And Sue from Linslade says, first time texter, can I say bum on the radio? You just have, Sue. And now it's time for young Albie to bring the terraces to life and improve on the chance that we currently use. Am I going a cappella again? You're going a cappella. I'm going a cappella. Right. Hey, Sam Gallagher. Ooh. Ah. I want to know why you don't score goals. (laughs) (laughs) That is rapidly becoming my favourite (laughs) thing. Excellent. It's uh, keeping the show alive, this, isn't it? It is, absolutely. It'd be dead without it. Um, I, I was think expecting an ooh say, oh. Sorry, I didn't. I hadn't worked out. Yeah, the I thought wings. naturally it was going to catch on. Do it again. Uh, do it again do Should it again. we? Yeah, go. On. Hey, Sam Gallagher. Who? Ah. I want to know why you don't score goals. I think we should say he scored today, didn't he? He did. I know that's what provoked me to write it. That was good. See, it's irony as well. That's yeah. just Scored great. For that irony and all this stuff. That there, England. <sighs> okay, tiddly pom pom. Let's play Spot the Ball. Sitting in front of me, I have a Don's related football action shot that was taken from Saturday's match against Bristol City with a 12 by 12 grid laid over the top of it. It's quite a cool picture, actually. And it's got Albie sitting on his ass complaining about something or other. Anyway. Using Photoshop or something similar that you kids use these days, we've removed the ball from the picture. What you need to do is use your knowledge of the game to determine where you think the ball should be, and indeed is, or would be, had we not removed it with Photoshop. And let us know. The grid is labelled A to L across the top and 1 to 12 down the side, so you just have to send the appropriate grid reference. A3, for example. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, on just, we go. Just quickly, just yeah, before you... Just before you uh... Right, you just said there about Alvy sitting on his uh, backside complaining or not. Is he still like that? Yes. Is he actually? Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. What was he doing about a falling over? Oh, he did a little bit of falling over. Yeah. He did a little bit was of Was there a stiff breeze a... when he just... Oh, <laughs> yes. Did he whinge? A lot? Uh, he whinged an awful lot. Surely not. There I was miss an awful him. lot of... I miss Earth. him, man. He was a good player. He I absolutely adore the man. Oh. Mm. Remember that time we went in goal? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Bradford City. <laughs> Was Bradford, wasn't it? Ah, I've got an interesting fact. fact. So. Whose last professional football game was that? I don't oh. know. Whose last professional football game was that? Steve No Shin Pads Claridge. Steve No Shin Pads Claridge, was it really? It was, it was his last word. game. And he didn't have any shin pads on. Ah. Is that why they call him Steve No Shin Pads That's Claridge? That's why they call him that very thing. <laughs> okay. And he, even he couldn't score against the mate that was Albion goal. Yeah. Wow. He likes MK Don's, he does. He loves us. Oh, he's mad he loves for us. us definitely. He's yeah. mad for us. Steve yeah. No Shin Pads Claridge. I seem to remember being standing outside the ground, uh, outside the NHS, with Crabby, who was taunting Steve Claridge really, oh, really. Where's specifically. your shin pads, Steve? He was much, much ruder than oh, that. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, so He's no. a boring man, isn't he? Golden, what, Crabby? Yes, no, I was just going to say, <laughs> so is that Steve yeah. Claridge? <laughs> our, our, our... It's the franchise. 
It's the Franchise Watch. It's the Franchise Watch. It's the Franchise Watch. Yes, indeed, it's Franchise Watch time where we summarise how the rest of the world is being lovely about us in the media. And to start off with, supporting MK Dons is like selling your soul. I find it hard to believe anyone can truly love football and that team. I just have to say that that was by uh, someone called Luther Biscuit, which I don't know why. I really like that. I thought that was great. <laughs> Hashtag Franchise FC, a stain on the proud history of English football. So funny seeing Franchise FC Stadium so full. Come on, Japan. There is a bit of a theme I through some of these. See yes, Franchise FC fans, that is what your stadium looks like when it actually has fans in it. Bums on seats at Franchise FC. No, there's a novelty. An example of what our greatest game can't become. Stadium MK full? Uh, definitely not Franchise FC playing. <laughs> Banzer. MK, that was more of a vulture takeover than a franchise. Vulture takeover, that's, that's interesting. That's just that. good that. We add hashtag 5k to MK. Looks like MK Don's add hashtag bleep all to Bristol. Shows they're still a plastic franchise club. <laughs> Banzer. There, there, there is a little bit. Imagine drawing against a franchise. MK Don's must be furious. Hashtag Bristol Sport. They're, they're, they're calling Bristol a franchise. There was a lot of this. Is there right. any particular reason why they call Bristol a franchise? Oh, right, and I'll just say one of these things if you want to get Google up in front of you. <laughs> they their kit supplier, their logo, like you see the one near on my, on my jumper do, here, the yes. kit supplier on the right hand side of their kit looks like um, genitalia. Oh. <laughs> okay. I if you look at it, it does. Yes. I still don't get why that would be a franchise. Bris, uh, Bristol, Bris, some Bristol company take over them, they've got their own sportswear company that runs the club or something along them lines. Okay. Got to say, Stadium MK looks apart when it full like it is tonight. He seems to be in love with everything MK Dons. Everything wrong with football. That's me. Pretty much everyone in the media except Martin Samuels has been taken in by Pete and his infectious enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. You'll never beat that. Pete's infectious enthusiasm. You can yeah. get cream for that, can't you? We should just take off the enthusiasm. Oh, dear. Pete's infections. Yeah. MK Dons are an utter disgrace. <laughs> Hashtag franchise. Inexcusable apathy from hashtag BBC Rugby towards the franchise that is MK Dons hashtag never forgive hashtag never forget. MK Dons nothing but a franchise. Uh, we want to give youngsters a platform should have started from the bottom as a new club. Never had that one before. No, never had that. It's a new one of me. Be very wary of ground sharing with MK Franchise. They'll steal, steal, steal STWL. STWL. Your identity and club and reband themselves, MK Spurs. I think we should. That would be, That'd be yeah, great. I'm doing, I love it. That. I'm doing it. They were AFC Wimbledon, but MK Dons bought them out and now they are. Now they all MK is now a franchise. I mean, what is the matter with people? <laughs> oh, no. It doesn't make any sense I mean, whatsoever. You but know? Even the points that he's trying to explain yeah, don't make sense. Right. Are they a bloody idiot, mate? <laughs> bleep off, everyone. Bleeping hate. Sorry, bleep off. Everyone bleeping hates MK for what they did to Wimbledon. Doesn't they bankrupt them? What I heard from Kick TV on YouTube. <laughs> oh, that will be right enough no, right, yeah. if it was on Kick TV on YouTube. Uh, unsubscribe. For sake. <laughs> bleep off MK bleeping fake horrible franchise bleeps. Bleep's sake, just because I tweeted about the franchise, I've been added to a list about that bleep tip <laughs> franchise club. Bleep off MK <laughs> <laughs> That's a self-fulfilling cash 22 prophecy, that I just cannot like MK Dons. I detest them so much, I cannot even bring myself to manage them as football <laughs> manager. Pete Winkleman, Jimmy Bullard's dad. The history of AFC is the same as MK Dons, a franchise. <laughs> now, this last one was actually said to me by a workmate when we were talking about we're talking about the rugby and how successful it was going to be at Wilkins and this bloke, who's got a season ticket at Luton, turned round and said, if Winkleman was Luton chairman, someone would have torched his house by now. And I thought to myself, and that's why you're in the state that you're in, Chief. <laughs> anyway, coming up after this show... <laughs> Yes, join me, DJ Darren Hoy, each and every Wednesday, like clockwork, 9 through to 11pm, 
for the Reggae Takeover. The Reggae Takeover delivers you everything from pure snap, crackle and pop, warmth from the vinyl, pure 45, to fresh from the yard tunes, never heard anywhere in the world, trust me. So join me, DJ Darren Hoy, with the Reggae Takeover, live each and every Wednesday, 9 through to 11pm, live on Seclo Sound. Fill your heart with sunshine and enjoy. <laughs> We've got Ben Reeves in our team. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give him the ball and let him scare, scare the, the opposition. opposition. Yeah. Classics. Ladies, I mean, they don't write them like that. We do. We write them we like write that. Them like they that. don't write them like that anymore. I read. You can tell I like the clash, can't you? That's very... You, you are just... Am, you are the living embodiment... I am of the clash. ...of, of one of the lesser-known members of the clash. <laughs> Topper. <laughs> okay, uh, it says here, chat... The chat. season okay, so let's far. Have a chat. Well, anyway, what do we think about the season so far? Seriously, how are we doing? I personally, I think we're doing all right. Okay, I, I genuinely thought we'd be doing much more worse than we are. Yeah, much more, much worse. more we, worse. We, much we've worse. had we've had a bad run, but we'll probably have a few more this season. But as I said earlier, if the season finished now, we wouldn't be relegated. We wouldn't be relegated. So it's not as bad as you think it is, and yeah. that's that's the opposite. Um, that's the task in hand is to not get relegated. So that is indeed one of the tasks. Now here is. I am a cynical old bloke, as most people know. No. And no, even before <laughs> even before we kicked off right that first day, I think the problem has been for us and indeed the club and everyone as supporters was that first game. Because we went into that first game, annihilated them. You just think, oh, this is easy, this. Yeah. And then we played like Neil and his big mate and we thought, oh, isn't that bad, is it? Then we went to Reading and you think, oh, this is all right. And then we had September, and things went spectacularly badly. Worse, genuinely, honestly, worse than I thought it would go. I at least thought we would have got at least a point, or even two or three points out of that. I think we are doing far worse than I thought we would, to be quite honest. I really genuinely am. I hate to have to say this as well, because I really thought we would do better, you know? No, but I don't think it's daft, because... Points wise, we're not doing as well as you know we'd like, but there's another way of looking at it, saying actually maybe we are because you know we're still above the relegation zone and whatever, and we've played some really really tough teams. Um, the fact that a lot of the performances Leeds, Middlesbrough, we could have got something out of, um, maybe not so Birmingham, and it was the other one we played, Derby. Derby. Um, which I, I thought they were pony. I thought we could have got something I, I, out of Derby. I think, I think, I think a fair few of them we could have got something out of. And I think this run might tell us that we need to take control of games a little bit more and try and stand up and, and play pretty football. But there were times last season in League One where we played pretty football, but we also dug in, got scrappy when we had to. And we got promoted on the back of that. And we've been playing pretty passing football for about five years and we never got anywhere because of it. And I think if we go back to how we did last season, get a little bit more scrappy, um, grab a couple more people's throats, get a couple more red cards, um, put Ian back in goal, I think we'll be all right. <laughs> what do you think, Bando? Because you are genuinely the man who sees, who, sees, the yeah, who sees the game and who doesn't... Need, I mean, I'm just a grumpy, professional grumpy bloke. Tell us what you really think. But I'm a ridiculous optimist and yeah. I'm very aware of that. But um, I, I, I'm chuffed a bit to where we are. I, I've... The, I think we will get enough points to stay up, but I don't think we'll do much more than that. I, I think genuinely be... still think, even though I've just, you know, what I've just said and what I said earlier, I still think if we finish one point above, you know, the relegation zone, that will be a result. massive achievement, yeah. especially after what we've just seen in September. I mean, I genuinely do think that we're going to do enough to stay up. The problem is, if you take. How, I mean, how many goals have we lost with Greg and Ali? It's got to be Good nearly 40. 40, isn't it? It's got yeah. to be. You can't take 40 goals out of a team in a lower division and then put them up to a much higher division where the standard is infinitely better than it was last year and expect to do well. But we have got Gallagher. I forgot about him, mate. I mean, you know, that's the problem. The actual problem is... My biggest concern, really, and it ain't really something... Like I've kind of thought about it recently is why on earth did we bring those two lads in from Real Madrid is absolutely beyond me it, I cannot it, see why they're here unless like I said to someone 
you know, did we sign the Real Madrid name? Because what I've seen are those two kids just think, why on earth are you two guys Did, did we buy them or are, they, or are they online? I have no idea. No, they're, they're free because they, they disbanded their um, C team, Castilla, and um, they were free. 